So, you know, one of the thorny businesses about being an author is titles. And I, I said, look, it's pretty clear what the title should be. The, the, the title should be The Greek Revolution. And um, my dear publisher, for whom I have enormous respect, came back and said, no, 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 that's really not going to work. Um, uh, people in the United States in particular just really have heard of two revolutions. They've heard of their own revolution, they've heard of the French Revolution. They, nobody knows about a Greek revolution. We're going to call it the Greek War of Independence. And I had to explain why I found that unsatisfactory, why this was not a war, uh, why it was a revolution. It was not a war because a war implies a conflict between two organized sides, usually fighting in a certain kind of way. This was not a conflict that had a clear beginning, and at least one of the sides was totally disorganized, the Greek, and in fact, the whole problem of organization was the fundamental problem of the revolution next to survival. On the other hand, I said, it's not, it's not a war because there was no Greek state and the whole insurrection was designed to produce a Greek state. So you're putting the cart before the horse. Revolution, on the other hand, was firstly a term that was employed at the time, never mind that it's the term that we all use in Greece today, um, and it was objectively a revolution. The society that came out in 1830 was in all fundamental respects utterly different from the society of 1820. Uh, and we don't need to go into those. I think it's obvious, and I'm not just talking about the confessional dimension, the introduction of capitalism, the introduction of new system of law, the introduction of new kinds of cities, and so on and so on and so on. The introduction of a European state, it was a revolution. So I, I said it was clearly a revolution, but then there's another dimension to this, and maybe this will lead us into some further questions. Of course, in Greece today, we all talk about the Eleniki Apanastasi, and that was certainly a term that was used at the time by many people, particularly many people of a certain education in and around the Filiki Eteria. But I was always bothered by one thing, which was the thought that for your average member of the average Choryo above Nafpaktos, let us take for an example, or in the middle of the Peloponnese, what did Epanastasi really mean? It meant nothing. The word meant nothing. The word had no meaning. This was part of a European political discourse that had no purchase. And I think my eyes were really open to this um, when I started reading um, an obscure article in Pandora, which was a very interesting 19th century Greek newspaper in which Greek historians used to publish on learned and obscure things from time to time. And they had an article about the very, very first Greek newspaper. As we know, the first printed Greek newspapers emerged in Greece during the revolution because a number of the leaders brought printing presses with them, been unknown before. But this wasn't about those. According to the author of this article, before the first printed newspapers, there had circulated in two or three places handwritten broadsheets summarizing news, which for obvious reasons had mostly failed to survive. And this gave the text of one of those. It had circ been circulated by a member of the Filiki Eteria above Galaxidi. And we could talk about news and fake news. This was, to a certain extent, fake news. What did this fake news broadsheet do? It was designed to whip up enthusiasm for the insurgency amongst a population that was pretty suspicious. So it told them what? That there is a revolution? No, it didn't mention the word revolution. It said, the kings of Francia, of Europe have decided Romeco. They've decided to make the Romeco. And the whole of this broadsheet was about the making of the Romeco. It was about a language of popular millenarian orthodoxy in which the long-awaited triumph of Christ, thanks to the Virgin, was about to become true, and the Sultan was to be chased out of Istanbul. And so I realized that at the very start it wasn't a revolution either for many of the Greeks. It was making the Romeo.